Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is a mini lesson on analyzing and interpreting data, level one data. Um, what is data? Data is simply information. So we gather information from phenomena, it could come from investigations, but we really want to do is we want to make sense of that data. So that means we need to organize it so we can better make sense of it. So the first thing you always want to do is recognize what data is. Again, information, it could be measurements, it could be quality. First thing you want to do is you want to organize that data. Lots of times we'll organize it into a data table and a real easy way to do that I'll show you is to just look for patterns in the data. And then the next thing that you want to do is you want to start to identify relationships within the data table. So how are different things related? Once you've done that, then we want to describe what does this data actually mean. And then the last thing we want to do is we want to make some kind of a prediction. So once we've done that, and after you've watched this video, you should be able to identify data and organize data in something like Starburst Candy or even in weather data. I'm going to walk you through how to do that with just simple Legos, just pulling data from that. And then you'll have a chance to do that in some pattern blocks. And so let me clean up and then we'll get started. Okay, so now we've got some Lego. So we've got some Lego bricks. And so what we're going to try to do is pull some data out of this. So the first thing I want to talk about is what is the data that I'm really looking at? So the data that I'm going to be pulling is coming from the bricks themselves. And so we're just going to look at what are some of the characteristics of the bricks and study them a little bit more deeply. So once I've done that, I really want to observe them. And all I'm trying to look for as you organize data in a data table are what are some patterns that you notice? And a lot of people have a limited view of a pattern as something that has to repeat itself. And all a pattern is in science is just what do you notice? What regularity do you notice? And so the first thing I notice is that they have different colors. And so let me organize it according to color. Okay, so as I organize it, I'm just starting to put the data that's found in the bricks into a data table. I notice that there's color. So the first brick is going to be blue, the next brick is going to be blue, the next one is red, and the next one is going to be yellow. So what's the next characteristic as I think about these Lego that I think is important? Let me write down another characteristic. So the next characteristic I'm looking at is the size. You've got a large Lego brick, then we've got two small Lego bricks, and then we have red. And so as you build a data table, the big characteristics are at the top. But what you'll notice is that if we think about this brick, we want to read horizontally in the data table. And so I couldn't rearrange these independently, so I have to kind of rearrange it. If I wanted to take this out, this would be the blue large brick. That would be the first one. But let's say I want to move the position around. So I want to move the position so the next one is really the red brick. brick. If I want to kind of sort my large that way, then I would put this one here and then I would have a blue one that's small and then a yellow one that's small. And so as I look through the data, there are different characteristics and I'm just kind of organizing it. Now you can see I organized the brick and the sizes from large to small. What's another characteristic? I notice that they all have studs on the surface. And so let me write that down. Okay, so the number of studs, and lots of times data will have numbers or measurements. The, the big blue brick has eight studs on the surface, the medium has six, and each of the small ones only have four. Um, what's another characteristic that I could gather from the Legos? So another characteristic that I've noticed is that there are anti-studs. And so studs are on one side and then anti-studs are going to be on the other side of the Lego. And so there's three anti-studs in the big blue brick that has eight studs um, versus the small ones, which only have one anti-stud. And so I don't know if you played with Lego, but you can see that when I connect this one together, kind of the anti-studs on one are connecting to the studs on another. And so I could connect it like that. 
And so the fewer of the anti-studs that I have, the fewer of those connections that I could make. So this is me just going through and I'm organizing the data now into a data table. And so what could I say? What's a pattern I notice that size, at least the way it's organized, size decreases from large to small. Studs decreases from eight down to four. Or anti-studs, if I read up, the pattern I notice is it increases from one to one to two to three. And so those are the patterns that we're looking at. But the next step, what we want to do once we've got our data table, is we want to look at, or, at relationships. What are relationships between characteristics? And so I'm going to write a couple of relationships that I notice from the data table. So the first thing I notice is that larger bricks, so I'm looking at size and studs, large bricks have more studs. And so a small one has four and a large one has eight. That's a, a relationship between these two characteristics. Let me write down another relationship. So the next relationship I notice is that as we increase the number of studs, we also increase the number of anti-studs. So blocks that have more studs have more anti-studs. So these are the relationships when you're looking between characteristics. I could also look here and say, well, how are anti-studs related to color? So as I compare those two, there's not really a big relationship because sometimes we have like one anti-stud and it's blue, and then three anti-studs that are blue as well. And so a way, to character a way to look at the data is just to identify those relationships. Now we're almost done. We just have two things left to do. With any kind of a data table, the, the final two things we do is we describe the data. So this is a description of the whole data set or data table, and then we make a prediction. So let me write a description here. So the description that I wrote is as we look at the Lego bricks, the larger bricks are going to have more parts, both studs and anti-studs, and so they can make more connections. Let me give you an example of a prediction that I could have. Okay, so the prediction I've made is that an extra large brick, something that would be bigger than the blue brick, would have more studs and anti-studs and it could be any color. So in my hand right now, I hold a larger brick and so you could look at the data and make some kind of a prediction of what it might look like and how many studs and anti-studs. And so the first thing that we would notice is that it's yellow, it could be any color. It also has 12 studs and then you could almost look at oh, how many anti-studs do you think it's gonna have and it's gonna have just five. And so looking at data and organizing it into a data table allows us to make sense of the data. So what I'm gonna do is clean everything up and you're gonna have a chance to do the same exact thing with some different data. Okay, for the next one, I've got some blocks. And so the idea is I would have you pause the video Go through and do what I just did. Identify the data, organize the data into a data table, come up with the relationships and a description and a prediction. Then unpause the video and then come back and you can uh, see how our data tables compare. Okay, so the first thing I would do is I'd want to write down what do I, what what is going to be the data? What data am I going to gather from this? And so let me write that down. Okay, so the the data that I'm going to dig into are going to be characteristics, just like with the Lego bricks, but it's going to be of these uh, pattern blocks. And so next thing I want to do is I want to just kind of organize it. I think one thing that jumps out right away is going to be color. And so let me organize it according to color. Okay, so I've started to organize my data table. I'm using color as the first thing and just putting that into its different groups. The pattern is that we have kind of four different colors. The next thing that jumps out right away is that there are different numbers. Okay, if I look at one specific one, uh, another thing I start to see if I look at an individual block is going to be, um, let's say the number of sides.
And then what is something else? I think the overall size of the block would be something that's important. Okay, so I've got uh, now a data table and it's got data on the patterns themselves, so some of the characteristics of them and also the numbers. So what are some of the patterns that I notice? The number increases from one to two to three to six or the sides decrease from six to four to four to three. Um, or the color seems to be just variable. Or the size decreases from big to medium to small to tiny. So these are all patterns that we're looking at in a data table. And lots of times you want to kind of read vertically to figure out the patterns. The next thing you want to do is figure out, okay, what are some relationships that I notice? And so let me write a couple of the relationships. So the first relationship I'm noticing is that larger blocks have more size. Like how do I figure that out looking at the data table, not at the blocks? I'm going to look at the size column, so the big to medium to small to tiny. And then I'm looking at the number of sides. And you can see in the bigger ones, they're going to have more sides. And in the tiny one, they're going to have fewer sides. So I'm comparing both size and sides. On the next one, I said there are more small blocks than big blocks. And so what am I comparing there? I'm comparing the size, which is going to be small, and the number. So I'm looking at between these two columns or between these two characteristics. Or I could say that color doesn't seem to have anything to do with size because it seems to be variable. I don't see a big pattern in the color. And so now that I've done that, the next step is I really have to look overall and I have to write a description of the data. So let me write that down. So the description that I wrote is, as we look at the whole thing, there are four different block shapes. We could also say block colors. And there are more smaller blocks with few sides that are present. And so we're going to have more of these smaller blocks than the bigger block like the yellow block. And so the next thing I would do is I would make some kind of a prediction. Let me write down a prediction. Okay, so for the prediction, what I wrote is if we found another four-sided block, it would probably be small or medium. And so right now in my hand, I have a, a, another block. It's got four sides on it. And so I could read down. These two have four sides in our data table. One was medium, one was small. And so if we look at this one, so this is a square. Is it going to be medium or small? Yeah, I think so. So, so that prediction tends to fit the, the data we have. Now, again, these are simple little examples of looking at data. But once you can kind of follow this pattern of organizing it, looking for relationships, describing the data and predicting, then you can move on away from pattern blocks. You could look at, for example, patterns in candy of a starburst or look at real data, look at weather data, for example. And if you organize it in the same way, you're going to be able to make uh, more sense of the data. And so that's data. It's just information. If we organize it, it'll make more sense. And I hope that's helpful.